Thanks for staying with us on The Real Story. The school mask mandate is an emotional one in our state. We're talking about our kids, and wherever you or anyone falls in the argument, there's likely a lot of strong emotion behind it. The governor is recommending the school mask mandate end on February 28th, per his executive order, which the legislature blessed last week. After that, local districts will decide whether to extend that mandate in their own communities or not. Now, the Department of Public Health does retain the authority until the end of June to reinstate a statewide mask mandate if circumstances require it. So last week, we heard from one state senator, also a doctor, on why he believes that mask mandate should stay in place until at least the end of the month. This morning, we're going to get a different perspective from State Senator Tony Huang, a Republican from Fairfield. He has a unique experience that shaped his view, specifically his opposition to mask mandates in schools right now. Good morning, Senator. Wonderful to have you on, as always. It's, it's great to be on with you, Jen. And, and I am so encouraged that we have moved forward on this emotional matter of school mandated masks, partially restoring local and parental control although it's still under the permission, as you said, of the Commissioner of Public Health and Education. But I have to tell you, I've talked to parents and saw genuinely how excited children are about having a sense of mass choice. It should have never been such a political and polarizing issue. All right, so tell me, you know, what your view is exactly. Were you always against the masking of schools? Was it you wanted them to have choices? Explain your position. Well, COVID is still a public health pandemic, and although it is a significantly different virus than it was two years ago, where now we know more about it and the remarkable medical signs of vaccines and boosters that we have to protect people, and as the chair, co-chair of the Bipartisan Bioscience Caucus, I believe in vaccines and I believe in boosters and I encourage everyone to get it for themselves and loved ones. But the danger has eased, and, and for me, our justification in government and 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 until recently the the continual extension of emergency powers for the governor and even as we voted on it just the last week we are justifying still an emergency power status and and when i hear so much about the use of fear and danger to justify these kind of emergency powers, it evokes similarities to my personal experience of a authoritarian government that used fear and constant fear and danger to justify emergency control and, and therefore curtailing personal rights and liberties. It was really a, 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 a powerful but yet subtle indoctrination that really influenced people and abridged people's differences of opinion. Uh, and what you saw in this mass, school mass, was that, that the means did not justify the end and that there should have been progress and reevaluation, but people were never given a chance to do that. Remember, Jen, when this was first just beginning and, and, and parents saw the social emotional dynamics of their children, the unmask movement was derided as fringe unscientific and and really just just a, a a element that that was not in touch but it's remarkable now that we've justified it that all of a majority of our school districts have said look we're going to give choice back we're still going to manage this and be cautious but what what i have seen this is the supposed solution of the school mandate has been far more damaging to the social emotional health of children and parents than possibly the virus itself for the past two years. All right, so I have two points that I want you to talk about, but first, can you just tell our viewers right now what your background is? I mean, your parents, from what I was reading in your bio, escaped communist China and ended up going to Taiwan, which is, were you born in Taiwan? I, I was. Uh, my parents escaped the communists, uh, immigrated to Taiwan, uh, which was supposedly a representative parliamentary government but because of the utilization of fear and danger of potential threats of attack, we were living under more where personal rights and, and freedom of the press and an and ability to be able to speak out and, and have elections and representative government did not exist. And it did not exist for over nearly 40 years of utilizing this. So we had a whole society, a generation of individuals that grew up under martial control, authoritarian rule, under the guise of fear and danger. And, and it was an indoctrination. 
When I say that, it, it, it's subtle. It's what you're told, it's what you hear, it's what you're supposed to do. And, and, and you know, when we came to the, when I came to the United States and understood representative government, elections, freedom of the press, that people have differences of opinion, that we have an opportunity to voice it, that's freedom. We never had that choice under a supposed parliamentary democracy that was under the guise of emergency rule. So you're saying kind of the mask mandate, the requirement uh, triggered you in some way to think about that. Okay, what about the argument that it's a public health crisis and you're on the public health committee, so you understand this too, um, that it, it impacts an entire group of people. So for example, you might want to give your kid the choice to not wear a mask, right? But that impacts the child next to them that might come home to immunocompromised adult. Absolutely. And, and I think the first thing is any child that is autoimmune and is at high risk, they wouldn't be going to school. I think the other aspect of it is, is, is an equally frustrating issue is in what upside down world that we live in do we place the burden on emotionally vulnerable children to protect our adults? That, that was another factor where we have imposed this when nowhere else in our society we have done so. The governor never instituted a mass mandate. He, 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 he delegated it to our local municipalities to give them the control of what they know best uniquely to their community. It is only when it affects children in, in K to 12 schools, public and private, as well as our nursing homes, that, that we have imposed that mandate on our children. And, and what we have seen, the social emotional challenge and, 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 and possible damage, Jen, is, is, is obvious. I mean, when you see the plurethra of youth mental health bills that we're now proposing, it is a reality that our children have been significantly impacted. And, and when you hear stories of, of individuals, we had one individual, a father, uh, Jim Cusco, who has been inspirational. He said, COVID did not kill my child. His son, 16 years old, suffered from depression and because of remote and, and all the unusual circumstances that they had to go through in school, he committed suicide. And, and what he had said was quite clearly, COVID did not kill my child, but the whole gamut of, of, of restrictions and, and alteration of his normal life has a, a, obviously a, a devastating impact. Another one oh, that really right. touched me. Senator, hold on. Uh, we only have like three minutes left, so I want to get you know you to talk about two other points. But I know some people would sit there and say too <clears throat> that the reason that the mask mandate was imposed uh, in our schools is because our kids were the ones that couldn't get vaccinated, right? We still have kids five and under, and that the mask was the way to prevent and keep kids in school. So what's your response to that? I, I believe in the science, and, and we are developing vaccines for our younger population, and I encourage that when it is medically proven and, and, and uh, adapted for use, that, that they, they absolutely, I believe in the vaccine. But that being said, we look at a population that is uh, a, 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 has higher kind of tolerances, less uh, physically vulnerable from a standpoint of our seniors um, and, and those with comorbidities. But I think ultimately, as I said before, when is it more damaging to the social emotional health of our children than possibly the virus itself. It has to be a balancing act. And the inconsistency in that policy and the demonstrated damage this has had on our children is, is incalculable. And I think we are balancing it. And the excitement that I saw in having people get their choice and, and, and local input back is powerful. And, and if you've seen the children that I've been able to interact with, when they know that March 1st is a day in which they will be able to move forward in a, in a new normal is something that you cannot ever, ever replicate. I mean, it is what we impact our children. And again, as adults, we have an important responsibility to be sure that we protect them more than it is to protect some of our adults. Senator, two things. First of all, do you know what Fairfield's gonna do? 
Fairfield, without a doubt, uh, approved uh, the to be mask optional. Newtown did so as well. Many, many of our communities have done so. Again, it is up to local control. Isn't that the essence of democracy? When we have mandates from government on down and one size fits all, that's when I have the challenge. And that's why I think the authoritarian concept plays into people's frustration is local input, local decision making. It really is the most effective way that we can combat any challenge that we have moving forward. Senator Tony Kwong, so good to see you on The Real Story. Uh, we appreciate you coming coming on the program. I think you were on with Senator Heather, Heather Summers, what, like six months ago at this point, talking about uh, the development of vaccines. And so we're kind of on the other end of this and appreciate your input. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Senator Huang. All right, that does it for us on The Real Story. If you want to watch these segments again, head to fox61.com or download the Fox 61 app and watch The Real Story every Sunday at 10 a.m. right here on Fox 61. Have a great morning.